Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. And in this video, I will specially discuss Siemens latency software step seven graph programming, some tips and tricks while we are using step seven graph, this programming style. And the reason why I'd like to discuss this topic is because over the months, there are some emails asking me about this Siemens latency software. It's very classic software and most of people actually was using letter logic to do the step and the sequence control. And for the graph, it's very handy and very useful tool. However, because this graph structure is a little bit rigid, it's not like a letter logic you can program that flexible. That's why some people will prefer still using the traditional way, using the letter logic to control the step sequence control. However, the graph in the step seven or in the latest software TI portal, all the 300, 400, and 1500 series controller, they all support graph. So actually this tool is very efficient. And from those questions, most of the questions came from how can we utilize this tool to efficient our programming, commissioning, and on-site test, right? This is something I like to show. So I summarize some tips and tricks. So hopefully it can be very useful for you. And I'm very welcome. You can give me some feedback and let me know if there are some other tricks we can share and we can summary. And let's have a quick preview. And again, this video only focus on some tips and tricks. If you do like this topic and if you just started learning how can we program the step seven or TI portal for the graph, this programming, I probably can set up another two videos, one specially for step seven and one for TI portal for the graph, basic programming, okay? So again, this video, we will focus on some tips and tricks. We can see this structure is very simple. So typically one main branch, it is here. From S1, 10, 20, then go to 30. And from here, it has one branch here. So main branch, it is here. And second branch, it jump to here. And then going back. And finally, the final step is S999. Typically, the final step we define as 999. And at last step, we use S1 and set one complete flag, showing this sequence is completed. Okay? And at the first step, we typically use the S0 for reset this complete. Once we leave out of this S1, then we will reset this complete. Because once we active this sequence, so the S1 will stay here and wait for this condition to move to the next step. So that time, this action has been activated. S0 means if we go in here and if we click this object properties, so we can see S0 means step is deactivated. That means once we leave out of this S1, then we will execute this reset. Okay, this is the first step. When we leave out of this step, then we will reset this complete. So this is the first one I like to share. Typically we will use one bool, either M address or DB address bool to show this sequence complete. So second, Assuming this sequence was running in auto. However, maybe your system has something wrong. Maybe your sequence is waiting for some conditions. For example, in this step, it's waiting for either for M10.5 to run this branch or it's waiting for M10.2, wait for this condition to run this branch. Imagine if your sequence has a lot of steps here, and now you just try to jump in this IB. So the first time when you open this IB here, maybe your wheel is here. Say now we click online. At the first glance, you have no idea what the current step it is running, right? So the second point I like to show is this option. Select this track active state. So once you active this track active state, then you will see the system will automatically jump to the active step. So it point to you. Now 
this step is activated. And see, once we active here, the system will highlight. I'm focusing on this step. And now I will use this simulation. Okay, meantime, the left side is also very useful to have a global view. And now I will active this 10.5 to run into this branch. Okay. Now I'm going to run 10.5. But okay, 10.6. We will see my wheel will automatically track this active step with this active. Okay, once we active this track active state, so my wheel, my window will automatically track what is going on. This is very useful while we are doing the commissioning. So your monitor, your screen, always tracking your active stack. And based on this spot, I can troubleshoot other things. This is one of the trips I like to share. Then let me share. So probably you will see other than this track active, we also have the control sequencer here. This control panel is very useful. Now, my step is at S131, this step. So by some reason, sometimes we like to retract this step, saying, oh, this step is something wrong. Temporarily, I don't like to run this step. I like to go backward, either go back to the S20 or go back to S130 to, to active this action again, either this step or this step. How can we retract? To retract this, again, firstly, you need to monitor your process. Make sure this retract, this backward step is safe for your tool or process. 100% you need to take care. So now I only introduce your logic way, your software skills. But in real case, you really need to take care of your process. Okay, then default, definitely the sequences was running the automatic, right? to manually force the step into one specific step. So we can select to manual first, switch to manual. And, and here we can select the step you like to jump to. For example, I like to jump to S120, go back to here. From here, go back to S120. Then I can select 20, okay? However, you will find it doesn't work. You try to click this active, it doesn't work because currently this step is still active. So the proper way to do this is firstly, we type in the 131. We will firstly deactive this step. Boom, we will see the highlight disappear. Then we point to the step we like to jump to. For example, 20. Okay, then click this active. Let's watch here. Active. Boom, this step jump to here. In the meantime, we will see. So I'm 10.5 was on. Even this transition was on. This step will not jump into this step because currently we are at manual mode. Okay, at this step, your sequence is holding here waiting for your new command. Because we are at manual mode and we only active 20, that's why your step is holding here, is freezing here. So this step can temporarily hold here. And then once you're happy to your current condition, make sure your tool or your process is safe, then you can go back to the automation. So now we can switch to the auto. But switch to auto, it immediately jump to the S130 and as 131 because the M10.6 was on. So it jumped to here and then jumped to here. Okay, so this is the manual way. And don't forget, so firstly, you need to active your manual mode and deactive your current step. And then type in the new step number and click the active. So this way can allows you to jump to any other steps, okay? This is a, how can we use this uh, control panel facilitate your commissioning. And then we will see the engine tab. The engine tab is also another very, very useful tool. 
Okay, firstly, I will use this initial, initial our sequence, okay? My sequence initialized using this initialized, okay? And then let's try this inching way. Typically, this inching way allows you to run your sequence step by step. This function is very, very useful at the early beginning when you just set up tool properly and try to commission, try to test your logic in your graph program. So if we are running the auto once, this M10.10, .10, this assuming this is sensor feedback, right? If this sensor on, then the sequence will run to the next step. However, if we are running the inching way, let's see what it will be, okay? If now I turn on this M10.10, .10, okay, we will see. Even this sensor on, this transition is on, the step will not jump to the next one because we are using the inching way. It's waiting for me to click this continue. Once I click this continue, boom, it jumped to the next one. Okay? And then it's waiting for the timer or waiting for some conditions. Okay? Let's wait for 10 seconds because I wrote 10 seconds here. So now let me turn on the I'm 10.1. I'm 10.1 here. Boom, turn on. We can see even this condition are on, so the step will still be hold here because it's waiting for me to click the next one, next step. Okay, jump to the next step. Again, so this is on, but it will not jump till I click this continue. So we can see it's very great, right? It's waiting for us to confirm your step and jump to the next step. So this is very useful at the early beginning while you are testing your program or testing your tool to make sure every step is solid, is safe, then we jump to the next step. So this is basically one step control for running your sequence. Okay, this is the tab inching. So it can do the step by step. And you may also saw that initialize and disable. So initialize allows us to initialize the current step, jump to the first step. I just showed the initialized a couple minutes ago. Then let's see this disable. Basically, once we click this disable, your sequence will not run anymore. Your own output will disable. So for example, now let's watch this M20.4 and 20.5. So they are here. We are at this step. So that's why they are activating. Okay. If now I disable this sequence, so we will see this n this output will not work anymore that's why this four and five the all goes off and what the current step it at now we can jump to the ob1 and see the output of the fb so if we go back to the ob1 where i call that the output the step number if i click on that monitor okay this mw102 it is zero okay after I click the disable, it go to zero. And now if I click the initialize, basically reactive this sequence, but the step will be reinitialized to the step one, initialize, boom. This step, it is active, okay? And then let's go back to the OB1. We'll see the step number shows one. If I click the object properties, we'll see we set this step one, this is the most of cases we will set the first step as the initialized step, okay? Sometimes maybe you will define other step as the initial step, it's up to you, but 99% cases will use as one as the initialized step. So when we click the initialized, then your sequence will jump to the initialized, the first step, okay? This is the button initialize and disable. And acknowledge is being used for the case if in some steps we are using the supervision. So that supervision is being used for if we have a fault event. Once the fault event from zero to on have the rising edge trigger, then this step will have something wrong. So for example, if we go back to the sequence if we go back to the sequence here, so let's run the auto. And this step, the fault, this ball is M200.0. Is this ball here. 
So this bull, once this bull from 0 to 1, it will trigger this super region. Let's take off everything first. So let's run the sequence. Okay. Now we go back to auto. Okay. So we are at step one. It's waiting for this condition. I'm 10.0. Okay. I'm 10.0. Boom. Jump to here. And now if I trigger this fault, boom, it will show red. That means this step has something wrong. This step has something wrong. And now if this fault got cleared, we fix the problem. Okay. And after we fix the problem, it's off. If we go in, okay, this fault gone. And this super region now is off. Then this V turns green. That means everything okay now. However, after this super region got okay, so the step still red because it's waiting for us to do the confirmation. The confirmation typically come from two area. One is come from this control panel. We can click this acknowledge to confirm. That's why it called a supervision. Another way we can use the program. If we go back to the function block call area, so we can turn on this acknowledge EF. Once it goes from zero to one, have a rising age, then it will acknowledge. So here I will specially use this button to acknowledge. So after this fault gone, so I click the acknowledge, then this that will turn green. In the meantime, we will see another thing. This is probably the next topic is the dot T and the dot U timer. So we will see the timer. Once I acknowledge, so the timer, this dot U will reset and it will recount the 10 seconds. But the T was 10 seconds already. So once we run 10 seconds as a step, it will not care that anymore. But the dot U, if any time we got a trigger fault and this fault gone, now everything turns okay. Okay. And now if we acknowledge, let's see this timer, acknowledge, then we will see the timer, this U will recount again. This is the difference between the T and the U here. See, now the U turns green, 10 seconds. Let's do again, fault, trigger, boom. We have a fault here. And fault got clear, problem got solved. Then we acknowledge. This time I will use the program. Okay, I'm 100.2. Okay, I'm 100. I will use this bool to confirm. Okay, go back to here. Okay, ready? I will confirm. And let's watch this dot t and dot u so we'll see we are at this step has been three minutes here so this t has been greater than 10 seconds it doesn't care any event anymore however the u will care about this so i will acknowledge acknowledge so we'll see the dot u will recount this 10 seconds again so this is the key difference between the dot t and the dot u and if we go back to the S7 graph, the 300-400 programming sequential control system, the manual. So here, this is the explanation for dot T and dot U. What the difference between these two timer? So dot U that means it show the current and the last activation time of the step without the time of the disturbance. That means any disturbance happens, so this timer will rerun. The timer again okay and in the meantime i like to also explain the t so the timer here is mainly useful to guarantee this step at least run 10 seconds as we can see here even this one is not on but the step has been running here for six minutes so this timer has been greater than 10 seconds already it doesn't care the condition at the left side
In another word, the timer here does not play any role for the sensor or feedback at the left side for the debouncing of them. This timer only care about this step, how long it has been running here. If you do need some timers has a disturbance function, so you better put that disturbance function, the timer, outside the graph, and then wait for that timer result at here. Again, this timer.t or the u is mainly used for to guarantee this step has been running 10 seconds to make sure at least it's running 10 seconds and wait for other conditions. Okay, this is typically used for some chemical process. If some condition has been on, but this step we still try to force the allows the material to do some reaction. So this timer is mainly used for that purpose. Okay, and finally there are couple of small spot say if now I like to jump to the main so I can click this button here and I can jump to the main and I can zoom out okay say now if I like to directly jump to the T20 how can we do the search function so definitely you can click the control F firstly I will disable the monitor and I will click control F and it jump to and it pop up this find and replace however this find and replace can search everything not only the S number T number now I like to specially search the sequence the T transition T20 only how can we do that so we can go to the edit and go to go to and select the step transition control E the control E this one is specially used for searching the S number step number transition number say now if I like to search T20 click OK but it directly jump to the T20 this is the keyword okay it only has number here this is a specific tool to search the transition and the step number. Okay, it's very efficient for you to search the proper step and the transition condition. Okay, finally, I like to show the option and the application setting. So this area, the condition at here, we are running the ladder logic. Default is selecting the IBD, so you can select the LAD. It is showing your ladder logic style. Otherwise. If we switch to the FBD, you will see here it is showing this style. It's up to you which style is comfortable for you. And other than here, if you go to the compile and save, we will see here the system will occupy the FC72. So some cases, if you are going to program a graph based on one existing project, probably the FC72 has been used. So that time you must be very carefully because maybe this 72 will conflict with your existing program. If the 72 has been used, then you can assign another free number for the system. So at here, we can go to the application setting and we can assign another number. Okay, just to keep in mind, graph will occupy one FC number for system run. Okay, and finally, I like to show one trick. This is the multiple cases I saw saying now this is the action right here in this step is running M20.2. So if this M20.2 currently I don't have a simple number. So let's name something for example. Okay, just trying to give a long simple name here. I apply. Then we'll see because this name is very long, it will go to the second line. So sometimes it's very annoying here. We definitely like to expand this room to a wider wheel. So how can we adjust this? Then again, we go back to the application setting and go to the editor here. And we can see address field width. The letter at FBD is going to adjust the width at this area. Okay, I'm gonna switch the wheel. I'm gonna switch the wheel to to ladder logic so this area 
Say now, if I'm going to add a same condition, say now, this is this. Okay, we will see because this room is very narrow. We will see the we will see the symbol is expanded for four lines. It is really annoying, right? It's not very handy. Then we go to here and go to the editor. So this 10 is used for adjust the width at here. And this action is for this area. So let's firstly adjust here. So let me go to set to 30. Okay. Then we will see this area is still the same, but this action area become wider. It can show your full name in one line, right? Think about this. If you have a multiple actions, you maybe have a 10 actions at one step. So each action, each line of action, if we show in two or three lines, though your whole wheel is, will be very messy. So this way will make your life easier. Again, let's adjust this area, the sensor, the feedback area. So if we go to the editor, so let's go to, let's set to 20. Okay, then we'll see this area will become happy to easier for you. All right, this is some tips and tricks I personally summarize. And again, very welcome to leave some feedbacks and leave some comments under this video. And let's do some more summaries. And uh, if you do like this video, I could also show how can we program, start from the scratch, how can we program the graph either using the step seven or Siemens, the TI portal software. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.